Okay, this is going to be a really, really short live stream. I'm not even going to deal with uh, people I don't know. And I'm going to go through uh, the 10, 10 astounding facts. Hello, Warren. Punk rock. That's right, baby. All right, you guys are welcome to leave any comments you want. Lee Fruck, Fruckman, you are like somebody new. I've never seen that name before talking about the same problems I have. I will not. Um, I'm, I'm not going to refer to anybody's comments who I don't actually know, but you're welcome to leave anything you like on the live stream within the rules of uh, YouTube. Um, you said your computer didn't work hooked up to the Internet in America. You can elaborate that on in the comments, but I won't be addressing your comments anymore. I don't know you. OK, so let's talk about cell phones in the Philippines and 10 astounding facts on how they screw the Filipino consumer as well as all foreigners. OK, the first thing is a load. A load is something something that they sell you that lasts anywhere from 24 hours to seven days. Okay, so we spoke two years ago about Blind Owl, and I'm supposed to remember that conversation. I have to apologize. I don't remember that conversation. I have 20,000 subscribers, and I don't remember every conversation I had with each one of them. You're welcome to leave any comments you like. Thank you for clearing that up. A load that these scumbags here in the Philippines sell you is a credit that will last anywhere from 48 hours, 24 hours to seven days, or you can buy a load for a month. Typically, the average Filipino can buy a load for the smallest load is 10 pesos. That equates to 25% of one hour's wages. And that disappears in 24 hours. <clears throat> now, you can buy <clears throat> a 20 peso load that lasts for 48 hours. And that disappears if you don't use it within 48 hours. This is not fair. This is not fair at all to the Filipino consumer, considering they're spending 25 or 50 percent of an hour's wages for a load that they may only have to make one or two texts, and then it, the balance of the load disappears to companies that are making hundreds of billions of pesos each year. Proof of that is go to any airport and look at all of the, uh, the equipment and buildings that are in the airport on the runway that such as support equipment like... Um, hydraulic ramps and on and off staircases and look at the sides of those um, all of that equipment and it says either globe or smart and you might see 1,000 smart or globe signs in an airport like Manila and that's only one section of the airport where does that money come from it comes from them raping the Filipinos and foreigners for these 10 and 20 peso loads Hello, Big Kevin. Welcome to the machine. So it comes from them raping. So if you put in uh, a 20 peso load and you have unlimited text for two days and only make five texts, in two days the load disappears and they put it in their bank account. Same occurs if you put in 350 peso load, which is the whole entire day's wage for a Filipino or $7 for an American for one week. And they are using false advertising partially because they say unlimited text and calling on a $7 load for seven days. Well, it's unlimited text, but for the calling aspect of the text, you only get three hours of calling. So that's, they're raping you by removing your credit anywhere after 24 hours and up to seven days, even if you don't use it, when it actually doesn't cost them anything to keep it in a type of credit bank for your account. That's one way they are totally screwing. And the biggest way they are totally screwing every consumer 
in the Philippines and or every foreigner in the Philippines and or every Filipino in the Philippines. Okay, so that's that covers the first two of 10 items. These bastards that own Globe and Smart, the two biggest companies, these bastards that own for internet and Wi-Fi, have a policy, whereas if you don't put a single minimum load of 10 pesos in every 60 days, in other words, if you don't reload your phone with a single payment of 10 pesos every 60 days, you completely lose the cell phone number that you have been working with for either a week, a month, or five years. And there is no way to ever get that phone number back. You can't buy it back. The company tells you the number doesn't exist anymore. They don't put it back in their system for sale. It just disappears. So they are basically extorting you to put in a minimum load every 60 days. And if you don't, you lose that telephone number. That is absolute extortion on any level from any point of view. So, so you can have a phone number for five years, which I had, and you miss a 10 peso payment every two months minimum for whatever reason, and you lose five, a telephone number you've had for five years and all the phone numbers that are associated with, now you have to call up each phone number by sending a text and notifying that person that you have a new phone number, which could take several days and they don't give a flying crap they just remove the phone number and there is no way to ever get it back. This is extortion at its highest level. Going on to number four. At best, cell phone coverage in the province is sporadic. Anytime you go outside the city, you are even lucky to get a signal. If you are in transit, a jeepney, a bus, or a car, because their cell phone towers are not worth the shit they were built on. In other words, if you're traveling outside of the city in the province, you're supposed to have 100% cell phone coverage because they have towers. They're supposed to have towers so that there are no dead spots. But on any given day, anywhere in the mountains, anywhere, on the flat plains, anywhere in the province, you can travel and just turn around with the cell phone in your hand, just turn around and the cell phone coverage disappears. Now that happens straight outside my house on smart. You can't use smart, even though I can see the cell phone tower here, you cannot use smart and move the phone. You have to stay stationary with the phone. So people stand outside like a statue to use smart because I don't know because I just don't know. Hello, Scott. Welcome to the machine. You turned into the right stream. You're just, you just, uh, you know, you, you're not used to, you're not used to punk rockers in the Philippines, baby. That's the problem, Scott. Okay. So let's move on to number five. If you call from what here is how they really rape the Filipino citizen. This is this one is good. Get ready for number five. And these are all going to be in the description box. I have a list. If you call from one cell pro phone provider globe to another provider smart, you pay eight pesos per minute or 16 cents per minute from one provider to another. Now that might not seem like so much, but if let's say that you you need to make a 10 minute phone call and you have a you have a, a weekly uh, you have you bought for the week. Okay, so you bought it for the week, you have 350 pesos on credit. Let's say you need to make a 10 minute phone call. Well that's that's 160 pesos for a 10 minute phone call. So the average Filipino only makes 400 pesos a day. 
you've already taken a third of the average Filipino's wages away for a 10 minute, could be an emergency phone call. You've already raped the average Filipino for a third of their day's wages. A third of their wages for a, a third of their hourly wage for a 10 minute phone call. That is absolutely absurd that they can charge you one third of an hour. That's like an American making a 10 minute phone call and costing $12, okay, for a 10 minute phone call or a dollar plus a minute. We had brick phones in the, in the 1980s that went to the supposedly fake satellites up in the sky and they were only a dollar a minute and that was 35 years ago. They are totally raping people for inter, inter-network phone calls. And you cannot buy a weekly or monthly cell phone load for a globe that covers calls to smart or vice versa. So you would have to spend $7 for a globe one month. I mean, one week globe, one week load to call globe to globe. And then if you wanted to call smart several times, say you're in business like myself and I want to call smart, then I have to spend another $7 for a smart unlimited text and calling for a week or $14 a week times four is $56 a month for cell phones. That's ridiculous. $56 a month for a Filipino is five days wages. So if a Filipino's in business or has to make phone calls, emergency, say someone's in the hospital, some emergency, they have to spend five days of their hard earned money just to have the ability to talk on smart and or globe. Because inter, 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 uh, inter cell phone company calls are so expensive, they would have to buy separate loads. Okay. Hello, John Escape. Thanks from North Texas. Okay. Now let's go on to number six. Uh, this is where, uh, this is, this is bend over. Um, my name is Bubba. I, I am Globe. I am smart cell phone company. Bend over. Bend over, you stupid people. Bend over. I'm jamming it up there dry and hard. Unless you save the, the phone numbers into your SIM card, which I've never seen that option and used my Oppo phone for three years. If the motherboard breaks, which happened to me, you lose. I lost three years of phone numbers because of a liar and they all lie when they sell you a cell phone. These people are not technicians. They are not savvy when it comes to anything but lying. When they're moved, bent over the counter showing you these cell phones, you have to understand these are complete robotic morons that only wish to make a sale. They have no idea what they're doing, and they have no idea how to work the cell phone other than text period. I bought an Oppo cell phone. They swore it would do certain things like connect to my GoPro camera. Nobody could ever get it connected. Nobody, not possible. They could connect it, but they could never make it do Wi-Fi. And that's why I bought the Oppo phone. So then I bought a Samsung tablet and they swore it would work. And that one is not possible to get to Wi-Fi. You can go Bluetooth to your computer Bluetooth, but it won't go Bluetooth to Wi-Fi. They all lie. So if you have a phone and the phone, what didn't you understand, Lee? I just explained they don't have one price. I just explained it perfectly clear. So why are you asking that question if you're listening to the live stream? I was so clear that they don't have both Globe and Smart. And now you're asking a question as to whether they have Globe and Smart. You're not paying attention, Lee. 
you're not paying attention at all. I'm sitting here talking to myself, according to your question. That's amazing. That's amazing. As a jet mechanic and as a tugboat captain and as a crane operator, if I if I operated on the on the premise of what you that I just explained this to you, if I operated on that premise, there'd be dead people all over the place under my crane around my tugboat. And when I fixed the plane, they'd be splashed all over the, the, the continent. It's amazing how you people listen and don't hear anything. It's amazing. So if you call from one pro, okay, I just went over that. I just did it. It was just number five. It wasn't like three numbers ago. It was the pri previous number. That's amazing. This is, are you Filipino? Because that's what happens when I talk to Filipinos. They don't listen. They say yes. They cuss a butt. They understand. And they didn't hear a damn word you said. As a jet mechanic, we had a shop class. The teacher went over things. If you didn't, if you didn't pay attention, you just failed. And you had to come back and do it again. It's amazing. Unless you save the phone numbers into the SIM card and not the cell phone, you lose, you lose all your phone numbers. It's amazing. Freaking amazing. I think you're just trolling me now. Every one of these useless, working, incompetent salespersons. For both Smart and Globe, every one of these useless cell phone companies in the Philippines knows exactly nothing or less on how to use a cell phone for anything other than texting. They know nothing. Both Smart and Samsung swore it would work with my GoPro camera. I bought it. I tried to hook it up when I went home and... It didn't work. The Samsung lasted a few weeks. The motherboard took a shit and the phone disappeared for six weeks into Manila. I will never buy another Samsung. On a side note, which is on the side notes after number 10, Samsung reception for Wi-Fi sucks. So in other words, number seven, if you want to hook up your GoPro camera, one of the cell phones you can go to, if you want to hook up your cell phone camera to one of the cell phones, you can go to eight or nine or 10 cell phone stores on the same day and not find a single scumbag salesperson who knows how to set up the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to the cell phone Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in your cell phone. In other words, they will tell you it can be done. They will swear you can do it. It's easy. And they will swear that this is going to sound ridiculous. It's going to look, it's going to be a uh, democracy doctor did in orange. I should spray some more hair orange. Let me get a, for that, where's my, where's my orange spray paint, honey? Let me, honey, Daisy, where's my spray paint, honey? Over there. Okay. For, for the democracy doctor, because he's, he, he, Salama, okay. So here, wait, wait, wait I, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm just going to close my eyes and hope for the best. Look, these are what we call the bozos. Okay, the, for the democracy doctor, he has been, very generous. I'm going to bozo both sides. Okay, and I'm going to go. I noticed a little bit missing down here. I'm going to fill in the blanks. Okay, so Salama, Democracy Doctor, this orange is for you, baby. That's right. Thank you. Okay, so I, I cleared the container. All right, so every single... All right, so uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Democracy Doctor. So I'm on. This, this is the truth now. Every cell phone per salesperson will say you can hook up a GoPro camera. Okay, we're moving ahead. 
You will not find a single salesperson who knows how to set up a GoPro Wi-Fi Bluetooth to the cell phone Wi-Fi. Every single salesperson says it can be done, but nobody, nobody, and I repeat, nobody can accomplish the tasks. In one day, I have gone to five, six, or seven stores, respectively, in the same mall and in another mall, BQ Mall, and asked and spent as much as 45 minutes in two stores and an hour and 15 minutes in one store. In other words, I chewed up six hours of my day going from one store to another, telling them if they have a phone that will hook up my GoPro camera, my Hero 7 camera, not my Hero 5. Hero 5s don't work with this, only Hero 7s. I told Samsung, I told Oppo, I told Wahoo, I think it was, and I told one other cell phone provider, which it wasn't a name brand store. If they can hook up my GoPro Hero 7 to the cell phone, I'll buy the phone from them. So Samsung swore it could be done. Now get this. I am telling you the truth. I covered this in another live stream. I am pissed, okay? I will swear to never buy another Samsung phone. They are totally deceitful. They're totally useless, the salesperson. So I go into the Samsung store and I talk to Heidi in the ICM mall, which I have a video of that I made that day. And I talk to Heidi and she takes my, my Hero 5 camera and she fucks with it for 35 minutes on a Wednesday. She fucks with my Hero 5 camera for 35 minutes. And then she comes to the conclusion that the Hero 5 won't go Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So I can never take my Hero 5 camera, connect it to my cell phone, and go Wi-Fi to my house. But. Heidi at the ICM mall next to Thinking Tools in the Samsung store, who is the manager of the Samsung store, swears that if I come in the next day, she will hook up my Hero 7, both Bluetooth, and show me how my GoPro camera will go to my Samsung phone and then go to Wi-Fi. So I said, okay, I'll come back the next day. No problem. Because she was the only person that was sure it could be done. So I go back the next day with Daisy. I get there at 10 minutes after 10 when the mall opens. And they tell me Heidi isn't here. I said, well, she said she was going to be here. Yes, sir. No, not an explanation as to why she's not there. They just agreed that when I said she said she was going to hook up my cell phone, that she would. I said, Heidi said she would be in today. Yes, sir. So where is Heidi? We don't know, sir. So call Heidi. So they call Heidi multiple times, one right after the other. Well, Heidi's cell phone was not within the range of the coverage area because Heidi, when she got in at 11 o'clock, said she was outside the cell area. So I said to her, what kind of cell phone were you using? She goes, my Samsung cell phone. I said, how much did you pay for that phone? She said, 49,000 pesos. I said, so you have a cell phone that you were just in transit from the province and between 10 minutes after 10 and 10.30, your cell phone was out of coverage area. And she said, yes. So Heidi has a 49,000 peso cell phone that doesn't work in the province. So I wasn't upset at this point, but I was upset an hour later. So I says, okay, well, show me how my Hero 7 camera can go to my Samsung phone that she was going to sell me for 18,000 pesos and show me how it, my Hero 7 goes to my 18,000 phone, and then goes to Wi-Fi by loading a live stream from my Hero 7 camera to your phone 
to Wi-Fi. She said, okay, because that's what she promised she was going to do the day before. And this is where the lying scumbag salesperson part of this conversation comes into place. She is a lying scumbag, Heidi, ICM Mall, Samsung phone. She takes my Hero 7, brand new, 100% fully charged battery with an empty SIM card in it. She takes my camera and starts doing stuff, trying to pair it up to her Samsung. I said, don't, don't, don't pair it up to your phone. Pair it up to the 18,000 peso phone that I'm going to buy. Said, no, sir. Just no, sir. I said, what do you mean, no, sir? She goes, let's hook it up to my phone to see if it works. I said, but I don't want to buy a 49,000 peso cell phone. Yes, sir. And she continues to work on it as if I didn't tell her to not do it. Because she's not listening. Because that's typical Filipino mentality. They continue along the single purpose inside their mind, even when you tell them to stop. So I allow her to go further with this for about 10 minutes. Then I go next door and pay a globe bill because they have a globe store right next door. I, no, I didn't pay it. I checked to make sure I st I'm paid up until August 12th, which I am. So I have covered, I, I pay for a year in advance. So I go back to Heidi and she's still doing it. I said, I took her phone. I said, I told you to stop with your phone. Now pick up the 18,000 peso cell phone and do it with that. No, sir. Let's do it with mine first. So I took my camera. I said, if you don't pick up the 18,000 peso cell phone that I want you to, that I want to buy, because I'm not buying it for, then I won't do this with you. So she picks up the 18,000 peso cell phone. Now she has to sign into her account on YouTube, which is okay. And now 20 minutes have gone by and she starts with going into her YouTube account. She shows me her YouTube account. And now I want her to hook up my GoPro Hero 7 to the 18,000 peso cell phone in her store, Samsung cell phone, and she starts to pair them up, but she can't. And she can't pair them up because the Samsung store that she's in on the ceiling right there, about six feet away, has a Wi-Fi antenna. And the Samsung store Wi-Fi is not generating enough of a signal to get six feet down from the roof of the building or the roof of the room to her, to my 18, my potential 18,000 peso cell phone, it won't generate enough of a signal to go six feet from the, from the ceiling to the cell phone so that the cell phone can be hooked up to Wi-Fi. And she insists that it's possible and 20 more minutes goes by and now I'm into the store for 45 minutes. And this idiot named Heidi is still trying to make the Wi-Fi in her Samsung store that she is the manager of work to the 18,000 peso Samsung cell phone to go to my camera. And I said to her, that's enough. And the, what she says to me, these freaking people, these lying bastards that sell cell phones tells me, sir, you have no patience. No patience. This is what quantifies there's no patience in the Philippines. I go to her damn store the day before and spend an hour with her and wait for her to hook up my GoPro Hero 5, which she cannot do and is not possible. And she didn't know it. And it took an hour for her to find out. Then I come back at 10 o'clock, 10 after 10 in the morning. She's supposed to be in the store and she's not in the damn store. So I wait till 11 o'clock at 11 o'clock, 40 minutes goes by and she can't hook it up. And I tell her, give me the damn camera back. I don't want to buy your cell phone. And she says, I have no patience. Is she paying for my time? I went into the city two days consecutively only to make the camera work. And this is what these mental midgets, these morons, these lying scumbags that call themselves cell phone salespeople, what they what they are 
that what they tell you, this is the shit they tell you comes out of their mouth. I have no patience after traveling for four and a half hours total in two days and sitting in her store for upwards of three hours. I have no fucking patience. No, they have no fucking brains and they have no fucking right selling cell phones or fucking plans or anything because they can't even make the functions that are supposed to be in the cell phone fucking work. And you can expect that from each and every cell phone provider. So if you have a GoPro Hero 7 and you want it hooked up, you make sure they hook it up in their store. Don't let them tell you to go home and hook it up yourself because it can't be fucking done 90% of the time. I never did get it hooked up because I never bought a cell phone. I went to Wahoo the same day, about four doors away from uh, Globe. What? Wowee. Wowee. Wowee cell phones the same day. Oh, here's another thing. Okay. Okay. So now we, we went over that. Now let's go over one more fucking thing. You know what they do when you walk into a fucking cell phone store? The first thing they show you is a 50,000 peso cell phone. Like you're going to buy a thousand dollar cell phone to work from in the Philippines, a thousand fucking dollars. Here's the problem with spending a thousand dollars on a cell phone in the Philippines. Okay. Number one, number one, they have no warranties. You drop it. It gets wet. It gets stolen. You are fucked for a thousand dollars in America. They have warranties where you pay a hundred dollars for a new cell phone. So you pay a thousand and you pay a hundred dollars. If you drop your cell phone, even if you lose it here, no, when they sell you the cell phone, you ask them, can this cell phone be traced with GPS if it's stolen? Yes, sir. Then if you want it to be traced after it's stolen, they cannot do it. So they fucking lie about that. Okay. So I walked into another store. What was the name? Wahoo? Wowie. Wowie. I walked into another cell phone store right across from Wowie. To it just says cell phone sales. Open the door, honey. Uh, uh, drill. Well, you know what? It's really hot in here. Shut the window. I walked into Close. what? Close. Okay. I walked into another cell phone fucking store right across from Wowie. And I said, Do you have a cell phone that will hook up GoPro camera to Bluetooth and Wi Fi so I can live stream? Yes, sir. And I said, Let me see the camera. And, and will you hook it up for me? She takes the cell phone in a box. It's an iPhone, an iPhone, 74,000 fucking pesos. She guarantees me I'll be able to hook up the cell phone. So those Hero 7 camera and, and Wi-Fi live stream. So I said, okay, do it. Show it to me. Sorry, I don't know how to do that. So I said, what the fuck are you guaranteeing me? You want me to give you 74,000 pesos, which is like uh, $1,400? You want me to give you $1,400 for a cell phone and you promise me that it can be done? These people fucking lie. They don't have not one fucking honorable bone in their fucking body. Not a fucking, there's no such thing as honor among salespeople when it comes to computers or cell phones in the Philippines. And now I'm going to read the comments soon. I think I'm done here. Okay, so when my, felt, my cell phone, my Oppo cell phone took a shit after three years, I lost three years of phone numbers. And nobody could retrieve it. Even though fucking Oppo has a, a call record of every phone, cell phone you ever made, every call you ever made, they won't give it to you. It's not even a part of any plan. You have to save each cell phone number on a piece of paper in your computer or into the SIM card. And you have to remember to, to save it in the SIM card because it automatically sa saves to your motherboard. They fuck you every fucking which way. They are fucking liars. They are scumbags when it comes to, to honor. There's no honor in the Philippines when it comes to cell phone, tablet, and or computer sales. The same holds true with computers. Bought three brand new fucking computers in the last four years. 
Not one of them fucking worked. Had to bring them all back. And one time I had the actual physical Tag Malaren police at the fucking self, at the computer store in the BQ mall demanding that they give the money back to me considering I bought it that day, the day before, and it didn't work. And they said it was a, a seven-day, 100% money-back guarantee. And then she changed it to a seven-day refund uh, upgrade policy. N not, not physically she didn't change it. She changed it verbally and wanted me to eat that horse shit. So I had the police there to take care of that. I actually had to have the fucking police there to get this fucking thing done. These people are a bunch of lying scumbags. Don't think anything other than the fact that when you're talking to a cell phone sales rep or a computer sales rep, just look at it as a giant fucking prophylactic filled up with fucking 10 days old scum. Because that's what you're talking to, a fucking scumbag that stinks. That's what they are. Now, I'll read the comments. Joe Blow has a lot to say. All right. And Scott Del Fuego, Warren, Lee, Mercury, Joe Blow. Everybody agrees with me. Hello, Big Kevin. Okay, Warren... And Mercury are uh, having a conversation, and Warren is saying he's not feeling well today, not doing well either. That's a damn shame, Warren. Every time I talk to you, I actually, actually, almost every time I talk to you, I don't actually cry when I'm talking to you, but I have cried many times after I talk to you because of your situation, and there's nothing that anybody can do. Not a damn thing. And Daisy does as well. That is a fucking shame that a good man like Warren H. Is, has cancer. And sometimes I see Warren writhe in pain while he's sitting there talking to me. Just writhing in pain in his uh, lounge. You know, a, a kind of, um, like a lounge. A big comfortable lounge chair. To the point where his eyes tear up. Damn shame. Scott Del Fuego, I just got a haircut nowhere near as stylish as Michael. Scott, let me tell you something. When Let me have my hat, honey. When I go into the city, everybody knows me. Okay, my hat. It's outside. It's outside? Yeah. Okay. When I go into the city, I have my head covered with, with the hat, right? And they all call me Ni Wong. Everybody calls me Ni Wong. Then I go, and, and Guapo, too. Guapo. And they go, what the fuck? What the fuck? And they go, not guapo, maot, which means ugly. And we all laugh. But none of them know. Oh, and this one is for the Philippines philosopher. My super chat, when I did this hair coloring thing, my super chat that day, because I know he's listening. He listens to everything. My super chat was just under four hundred dollars by about three dollars i think i collected three hundred and ninety seven dollars in super chat the day i did this haircut so you can ramble on about do people doing stupid shit your problem to the philippines philosopher is there's uh multiple problems you have multiple problems one you don't know how to laugh at yourself number two you don't know how to bang a fucking pot dude if there was anybody that I ever fucking watched bang a pot, honey, give me a big pot, please. Let me show them how it's done. If there was anybody that ever knew how to fucking bang a pot, it's Michael Fazio, okay? You, Philippines philosopher, that guy in Cebu doesn't know how to bang a fucking pot and get a lot. Now, I don't expect anybody to give me anything. I just want to give the Philippines philosopher a fucking lesson on how to bang a pot. Because he sucks at banging a pot, I gotta tell you. <laughs> let me have that. Let me have the spoon. Okay, Put, leave the pot there. Leave, leave the pot there. Leave the pot. There. Yeah, leave it.
now she does look like those little guys that crawled out of the hole on Superman that Scott Del Fuego was talking about. Honey, you're holding the pot too tight. Let go, let go. Let, 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 let go. Put the pot on now. I'll show you how to bang a pot. I'll use Miss Daisy. Put the pot on there. Come on. Get in there. Come on, honey. Let's show let's show the Philippines philosopher. Put the put the pot on your head. <laughs> put it on your head. All right, yeah, let you let go of the pot. I'll take care of this. No, 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 no. Don't touch the pot. I did not touch. Ah, honey, you, you're absorbing the vibrations. You got to bang. Look, to the Philippines philosopher. You want to make money? You got to put the pot on your head. And you can't hold the pot too hard. You can't hold it too hard. It sucks up the vibrations. And this is, and first of all, you fuck, you, 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 you got a fucking pot that doesn't fucking, ain't big enough. Your fucking pot is too small. You can't collect Super Chat with a small fucking pot. You don't even know the basic tenets of collecting Super Chat. You need a big fucking pot. You got to put it on your fucking head all the fucking way like this and bang that motherfucker, bang that motherfucker till you go deaf. Okay? Watch them. You gotta bang that motherfucker like there's no tomorrow. There we go, 125 pesos. Salamat. See, now let's sing the, the, the thank you song. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Tom and Ruth, Salamat. You gotta bang that fucking pot like tomorrow's never gonna come. This is New Year's at the end of the time. At the end of time. You gotta fucking bang a pot a lot to get a lot. You gotta bang a fucking pot. And another thing that you can't do to the Philippines philosophers, you don't know how to say thank you to your fucking customers. When they send you money, like Tom and Root, they're very generous always. You gotta fucking take the pot, relocate it on top of your fucking head, and bang it a lot. That's a congratulatory bang. See, your problem is you don't know how to bang a pot to get a lot. Aside from the fact that your hair is fucking cut wrong. You got your hair cut in a round way in the front. You, you got to cut the motherfucker back like this. You got to go back with the motherfucker. And you got to have bozos. These are bozos. If you want fucking bang a pot to get a lot, you got to have a fucking tomahawk on the top and bozos on the fucking side. That's the only way to fucking bang a pot and get a lot. So I collected $397 in Super Chat last week. Thank you very much, everybody. And now I'm going to go back to the comments. If anybody else needs a fucking lesson on banging, this is the problem with the Philippines philosopher. You got to put on a show for the people. If you don't put on a big show for the people, you don't get a lot. You bang a pot, you get nothing. You put a pot next to the side of your head and banged it like uh, like you didn't want to wake anybody up. Let me bang this pot, but I, won't, I don't want to wake anybody up in the next room. So you banged it like this. Like a church bell in the morning. No, no, you got to be the fucking town crier. When you bang the fucking pot, bang a lot, motherfucker. Bang it like you want to go deaf. Jeez, this is the basic tenets of banging a pot. The live stream showed you how to do all of this. Unfortunately, for some reason, the live stream quality is terrible. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Again. Again. Okay, do it again. I'll do it again. I'll bang this fucking pot till I go deaf. Salama, Tom and Ruth. Okay, watch. You want me to do it? I'll do it. And you got to listen. You got to pay attention to your subscriber base. They tell you to bang a pot a lot and bang it again. Watch this. I'll fucking bang it again. <laughs> As 
as a jet mechanic, and I am a licensed A&P jet mechanic, you understand there are basic tenets of every lesson. And the basic tenets of banging a pot a lot is you got to make a lot of noise. It's a bang a pot, get a lot. But it should say bang a pot, get a lot, make a lot of noise. A lot of noise, bang a pot, get a lot. But it's too long. It's too complicated for most people. All right, so I'm going to go back. Thank you, Tom and Ruth. Salama, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom and Ruth. you got to put on a really big show. And you have been using my uh, cl cliches. You used my bang a pot, get a lot cliche on your on your channel, this is the, to the Philippines to philosophy, directly to the Philippines philosophy. You used my cliche of bang a pot, get a lot. It's okay to do that. It's not, I don't, I didn't patent the idea or anything like that. But you swore you would never put a pot on your head. You swore that. You swore you would never do it. Then you bang the pot next to your head and nothing happened. Nothing happened. Then you said you released all the people that you had blocked so that they could super chat you. People like Warren H. You know when Warren H. is going to super chat you? He's never going to super chat you. That's when you said you released Scott Del Fuego to super chat you so he could super chat you because you, he told you once that if you bang a pot, he'll super chat you. But because of all the shit that you have said about Miss Daisy and myself, nobody named Scott Del Fuego was ever going to super chat you. Then you released Blue Rose from what you call prison so that he could super chat you. You know when Blue Rose is going to super chat you? When hell freezes over. You know when any of my subscribers are going to super chat you? When hell freezes over. None of my subscribers are ever going to super chat you except the two subscribers that are subscribed to my channel, which are trolls on your channel, and they send you 25 peso super chats, which is the equivalent of 50 cents. And after you get your 50 cents from Google and they take 30% out, then you collect Let's just say you collect 30 cents, and after you pay tax on the 30 cents, you collect 25 cents, and you'll spend three hours on the computer for 25 fucking cents, hoping that somebody else will send you another 25 cents. So I did more in Super Chat that day because I know how to bang a pot and get a lot. I did more in Super Chat that day than you did all year because... You don't follow instructions. Do you know that the basic tenant of banging a pot to get a lot is to make a lot of noise? Let me show you again. Let me show you because you don't listen. You just don't fucking listen. <laughs> That's what you mean. Ah, Scott, Scott Del Fuego. Five dollars, Salamat. Let's see if Scott has a request. Have some banging pot and egg money, my dude. Okay, so actually, Daisy and I just had some nice fresh fried eggs. Thank you, Scott. Oh no, that's not uh that's not Scott Del Fuego. The real Lord Kittens. Ah, this is the real Lord Kittens. Salamat, whoever you are. It looked like Scott's without my glasses. It looked like Scott. So we will sing to you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The real Lord Kittens. We will we will have some uh, we we have a, a little thing to do oh, maybe this afternoon and tomorrow. I might have to be in the city. Um and we will have uh fresh fried eggs with um well Daisy will have rice and I will have lumpia with that. Thank you very much. Salama. Okay, so you're a new person to my channel, The Real Lord Kittens. Thank you. Welcome to what we call Welcome to the Machine. And I say Welcome to the Machine because what people don't understand about Pink Floyd is their album, Welcome to the Machine, even though it has the sounds of entering and exiting a car, like the opening and closing of a car door, the machine that they are talking about in the album Pink Floyd 
is not a car. It is, in fact, the machine known as the human body. If you Google what is a machine or definition of machine, it will come to the definition of a machine and it will describe that the most prolific and complex machine on earth is the human mind slash body. And that's what Pink Floyd was talking about when they said, welcome, welcome my son, welcome to the machine. They were inferring that they were some sort of a deity, almost godlike, and they were saying, welcome my son, welcome to the machine. And if they were godlike, they were talking about the spiritual aspect of the universe and that they were in touch and or part of the spiritual aspect of the universe. And when they said, welcome my son, welcome to the machine, the, the prelude to that was that the type of music that they were playing, very smooth and rhythmic, was a type of music to get you into an alpha state of meditation. So concept or understanding and move to a higher plane of consciousness. Now, this is all involved with metaphysics. But if someone were to listen to Pink Floyd and understand metaphysics and listen to that little dissertation I just made on Welcome to the Machine, they would see that the correlation is, in fact, not only real, but quite probable. So welcome the real kittens to the machine. All right, so ah, Scott is having uh, Scott is having a bad hair day with his uh, his kid has won his patience down to a nub, kind of like the nubs I have, the same kind of nubs as I have on the side of my head over here, Scott, the same thing. These little nubs, is that what your kid is doing to you? Wait. Sorry to hear that, Scott. You and I have talked about that before. Cyflyer 67. They are a total fucking ripoff. Every cell phone company I have ever done business with to buy a cell phone, every sales rep, a total bullshit artist, total liar, scam right across the board. Yes, sir. That cell phone is 100% replaceable for seven days. You walk out. I walked out of a cell phone store in Cebu with a 100% fucking warranty, seven-day guaranteed refund. And I walked out and stood in front of the store, sat down on a bench for a little bit, walked across the street to my hotel, tried to do something in the cell phone and it took a shit. I was back within 45 minutes of purchasing the cell phone and I spent the next six hours that day and the next day trying to get a refund and they would never give me a refund. I had to upgrade to the next highest cell phone. Never believe a fucking word they tell you when it comes to refunds or guarantees or 100% warranties. When they say it's 100% refundable, it means that 100% refundable for seven fucking days, 100% money back guarantee for seven days. What they're saying to you when you read the fine print is that it's 100% refundable money as long as you're upgrading to the next to, to the same cell phone replacement or the next grade up. And the next grade up in cell phones, in computers, when I bought the Acer computer for 39,000 pesos, the next upgrade was 54,000 pesos or another seven, $700. They fuck you coming and going in sales in cell phones and computers in the Philippines. Don't make any fucking mistake about it. They fuck me, they're going to fuck you, okay? Because you look a lot more fuckable than I do. I don't look very fuckable. They just know they can fuck you because they've been fucking everybody that walked through their front door for the last fucking 
since they started selling cell phones. Hello, John Escape. Happy 4th of July. DH, DJH 22 Lem. Three thumbs up from me. Love your hair. Chairs from North Texas. Salamat. Thank you, DH. Uh, you know, that's funny. That blow your load as often as possible, Scott Del Fuego. I saw a video the other day that had something to do with that. I My fucking tears were coming out of my eyes for a, a solid 45 minutes. Then I went to the fucking... Then I went to the fucking city on a, on a jeepney to take care of uh, some business for my business. I have paperwork to do for my business. And I laughed. People on the jeepney were going, what the fuck are you laughing about? I laughed for minutes, minutes on end when I saw that video about blowing a load. I got to tell you, that was one of the funniest fucking videos I ever saw. The Smash TV ne Network, you say. I don't know what that means. Hello. Big ball, big ball of fuzz is in the house, Philippines house baby from Democracy Doctor, who's been a steady $20 Super Chat member for a very long time. Thank you, Democracy Doctor. Scott says, Scott is em em emulating, that's a big word for some of you people, emulating a sales rep. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. You can do that, sir. I will do anything you need, sir. Possibly, sir. Yes, sir, sir. Yes, you must go to Manila, sir. They can help you. They fuck you. They just fuck you. If you're buying a self, they they don't have warranties. Like in America, you can buy a, an, an insurance policy. I had a... Um, I didn't have an expensive cell phone in America. I think I might have paid like $60 for my cell phone. And it was $3.95 a month for the insurance. And every time I broke it or dropped it or put it in the water, I think I paid like a $12 fee and, and continued to pay $3.95 a month. So for $12, I'd get a new cell phone plus the $3.95 a month. And maybe I dropped my one cell phone in the water a couple of times or it got wet. Or I crushed it one time a forklift, but I still got a new cell phone for three dollars and ninety-five cents and twelve bucks. Here they have no insurance policy. Now they know fucking damn well that inside that phone they can trace the signal back to wherever it is. Doesn't matter. Somebody puts a new SIM card in it. If the FBI wanted to find out where that cell phone is, they just push a button. It would tell you where that cell phone was every time it turned on, and maybe when it was off. But here they say fuck you. Buy a new cell phone. Don't lose it. Don't get it wet. Fuck you. Buy a new cell phone. Don't lose it. Don't get it wet. Because we don't give a fuck if you have to buy another cell phone. Thank you, Lee Fruckman. Okay, you are right. I apologize. I should have been paying attention. Thank you, Lee. I apology accepted. I'm sorry I went off on you, but damn, man. When I get into these, you have this rant today. Today's fucking rant has not a fucking thing to do with cell phones. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't have a fucking thing to do with cell phones. It has to do with something else that cost exactly Daisy. Sixteen hundred exactly, exactly nineteen hundred dollars and change. Exactly, somewhere it was nineteen hundred dollars in fucking change. A bill I got that I should not have gotten, and I'm responsible for the fucking bill. And it's not my bill. And each person in each company agrees it's not my bill. Now Warren, I sent. Warren understands what it is, but each fuck. It's now Warren. That fucking bill went from $400, which I agreed to pay. So they added $1,600 more fucking hundred dollars to the bill. Another $1,600 fucking dollars to the fucking bill. They, this, this cell phone rent is about scumbags in the Philippines adding fucking numbers to 
pre pre agreed bills and then telling you you have to fucking pay this bill or they're going to accrue fucking late charges on the fucking bill even though the motherfucking company that I did business with that owes the money they agree that company owes the money that company is not going to pay the bill and I have I have now become responsible to pay the fucking bill that's what this fucking rant is about scumbag corporations that fucking lie and deceive and one day I'm going to do an expose on those fucking companies because I have to go pay a fucking $1,603 fucking bill today that the company who made the mistake and didn't pay the fucking bill agrees it should be their bill, but they said they paid the bill, but they have no verification that they paid the bill. The company that was supposed to collect the fucking bill charged that company $900 in late fees because they didn't pay the fucking bill. I get the paperwork for four or five days ago, and now the fucking bill is up to from $1,500 and change to $1,600 fucking dollars, and I have to pay the fucking bill. Then I can fight them, maybe, but from the Philippines to America. So I have been fucked by just about every corporation I've ever done business with. And all those motherfuckers do is slide papers across the fucking desk. Not one of those motherfuckers, all men and women, the secretaries that work for those fucking corporations have never fucking gone out and actually earned a day's fucking wages. And because these scumbags decided amongst themselves, if they don't pay the fucking bill, Fazio will have to fucking pay the bill. And they all got together and fucking agreed on this, even though the 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 fucking the the agency that oversees all of this agrees 100 percent it's not my fucking bill, but I'm the one accruing fucking late charges on the bill at 60 fucking dollars every four days. Somehow it's gone up 60 bucks every four fucking days since I got the bill six days ago. So this fucking rant is about these scumbags in America and the Philippines that are corporations that you sign an agreement to do a fucking job for you, and then you're fucking locked into the agreement. The same way these scumbags in the cell phone industry lock you into your fucking two-year contract or three-year contract for Globe, you can sign a, a two-year minimum contract to get what internet hardwire internet or wi-fi in your house and some catastrophe happens your house burns down you have to move they won't move the fucking wire three doors away and you are responsible for 25,000 pesos in cell phone costs or your your bureau of immigrations will revoke your uh, card your uh, visa that's how they're connected here they are fucking everybody, these corporations. And I'm going to finish reading the comments. And then I'm going to go give somebody 80, 80, okay, no, $1,600 is uh, 1,000 is 50 and 600 is 30, 80,000 pesos for one fucking bill that I'm not responsible for. I'm going to go pay that. I'm going to pay through my fucking bank and I'm going to go pay another 17,880 17, something pesos for a bill I am responsible for. So I'm going to go pay 2,000 fucking dollars in bills. Neither one of these bills I was made aware of when I started this project. Neither fucking one. But one I definitely agree I'm responsible for. And the $1,600 bill, everybody agrees I'm not responsible for it. And I still have to pay the fucking bill. That's what you get. And when I do the expose, it's going to be a fucking video every fucking two or three days for a month when I'm all done fucking with these fucking scumbag corporations I'm doing business with right now. This is fucking ridiculous. 
I thought I was going to have a nice fucking easy, easy thing. Everything went fucking smooth until I fucking left New York. And then all these charges started accruing because people in fucking New York and New Jersey didn't do what the fuck they said they were going to do. And they just let it fucking ride for two fucking months without telling me. And now I get I get back to the Philippines and then two more months, four months fucking later, they send me a fucking bill for sixteen hundred three dollars four days ago from April fucking 24th, 2019. Dealing with big corporations, they suck. They're a bunch of thieving, lying scumbags. Warren is saying, LOL. Democracy Doc, the Daisy putting the pot on her head. That's the first time she ever banged the pot. She's not real good at it. But what she did, she made this shelf. See this shelf right here? See this shelf? I came home yesterday, and Daisy built this shelf to put the books on and, some, and my tablet and stuff for like a recharging station. She actually built this shelf all by herself. So she's really good at certain things, and she she acts. That's her first carpentry job, and it's a hundred percent successful. It has about six pounds of garbage up on the shelf, and it's holding nice. Thank you, so, sweetie. What? That's my second. And the first is shurak. Right, the shurak. Come over here and say hello, honey. All right. So I'm going to read these comments. Say hello while I read. Hello everyone, good morning here in the Philippines and in America or over the world is maayong gabi or good evening. Democracy doctor, has anyone noticed that Sam, well Samsung's quality has just sucked every, my tablet has fucking garbage reception. I, I could be three feet away from the fucking Wi-Fi antenna and just turn Move the Samsung tablet an half an inch on in, on any angle, and it'll lose connection. And it does it every time, almost every time I move it. Yeah, it sucks. John Escape has a $99 cell phone. Yeah, in Manila, it would work because they have a lot of Wi-Fi. I don't know about Leyte. Yeah, democracy doctor. Yeah, those I, I, I see Filipinos with thousand dollar phones. They take out payment plans and hope that they don't drop the phone or lose it. It's a joke. We found a cell phone once. I don't know if it was a good one or not. But we did. It took us hours to find out how to, we called up every number on the cell phone to finally get a guy that knew the guy who owned the phone. And then they came over to the house. Nice young man and his girlfriend came by. We gave him back his phone. They were just hardworking Filipino family, and uh, we didn't want a reward or anything like that. But these, that he was distraught. He had all his artwork on the phone. Student. What? He was a student. He was a student. Yeah, he was a nice young man. Stayed here for about a half an hour, and then he went home. But uh, these, these, it, it destroys their life when they look up the phone. Hey, Foz, look up the average I. Q in the Philippines, it explains a lot. Oh, don't fuck it. Don't, 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 don't talk. I swear to God, the IQ in the Philippines is fucking at best fucking minimal. I won't even go into what fucking IQ in the Philippines. They don't even understand. There's no way that anybody could fucking relate to the IQ in the Philippines. You sit there talking to somebody, you say to them, I want to go to the BQ mall. I'm looking for the Samsung store in the BQ mall. Can you help me with that? And they say, yes. And you say, well, where is it? Yes. What do you mean? Yes. BQ mall. And they point over there. They don't know where the Samsung store in the BQ mall is, but they say, yes, they can. Ah, don't fucking get me started. Joe Blow bought an Apple success because an employee said Verizon phones don't use SIM cards. I had a Samsung note and loved it. All right. Well, I don't know anything about that. Those are up way up above my fucking pay grade. Oh boy. All right. So I don't know where the hell we are now. Um,
Wow, there's a lot of Scott Del Fuego did a super chat. I am so far away. Oh my God. I am so far away from the bottom of these comments. I'm going to have to move through this. John Escape beat and switch. That's the typical mentality of the Philippine salesperson. Democracy Doctor says you can no longer activate anything older than a Note 5 on Verizon's network. Don't know anything about that. Joe Blow, just like he said, people lie. They lie. Oh, I am fucked to the tune of $1,603. As soon as I'm done here, I have to call up and they have to send me a final fucking billing. And I, I may very well have to go to Cebu to pay it in cash because I don't fucking trust anything that anybody says in the Philippines. I'd rather hand them fucking cash and get a physical receipt then send it through these fucking banks here. You have no idea how fucking pissed off I am. They fucking straight up and down lie. Thank you, Richard Lee Rogers. My hair looks great. $1,000 cell phone on a five cent fill. The infrastructure, that's right. Scott says five cent infrastructure fill. Their infrastructure sucks here. You, God, oh, God, I was in a fucking, the tax identification office. To set up a business, you have to have a tax ID number. So I went to get my tax ID number last, it could have been Tuesday, but I think it was Monday, last Monday. So that was, okay, so I get there, and I wait three hours, and the fucking, the computers were down. The whole time I was there, the computers were down. They were hoping the computers would come up. I said, when is this going to go back on? The computers are down, sir. Wait a while. Let's fuck this. I'll come back tomorrow. So I go back on Tuesday, and the, the computers are down. That's the first question I ask them. So I take a number, and I go to the BQ Mall because they're close, and I come back four hours later. The computers are still fucking down. So they tell me fill out some papers. Just fill out the papers for the tax ID number that I need. Okay, no problem. And I got it. They they fucking researched it. Not that day, but the next day the, the computers went on. They said, you have your ID number. Come and pick it up. So I went there to pick up the fucking number. So they give me the number. That's three days in the fucking biz, I, tax ID office. Okay. I, I didn't know you they give it to you over the phone. I didn't ask. Okay. So that's three fucking days. Now... I said, where's my card? Yes, sir. We'll, we'll send you a notice when your card comes in. So Monday of this week, I get a notice that my card is available. You have to come in and sign for your card. So I go there Monday, and I wait online for about an hour and a half. And Estella, who was at the tax ID office, the boss, she left early for the day. Come back Tuesday to get your number. So I went there to get the sign to get my card. Okay. That's four days. Now I'm at the tax office to get a plastic ID. The tax ID is already, it's already done. It's a done deal, but I want the card. Okay. I want the physical placard in case I have to go somewhere. I don't have to carry these little pieces of paper with this information on it. So I went back Tuesday Wednesday. I think I went back. What's today? Thursday? Wednesday. When did I go? Yesterday? I went back Tuesday. Tuesday I went back and Estella was there and we were everything was all smiles and she knew about my situation, you know, that I was there for four days already and she came to the desk and she was with me for about five minutes. She stamped it with her official stamping machine thing and i have my tax id 100 percent. this is guaranteed that if i want to apply for plans and or changing of permits or anything like that 100 percent, i can do that and the placard will be along august 13th it takes five weeks six weeks to get the plastic card it took me seven months to get my driver's license that's how far behind they are with plastic cards. So everything in the Philippines is fucking 1950s or 
or prior computer technology. Yeah, Faz, or back up a cell phone, sync it with Gmail. Yeah, well, I didn't know that, though. Thank you. They have no ethics, Richard Lee. Nothing. Zero. Squat. It's all right, Warren. At least I'm crying for a good fucking reason. Yeah, Slim Jim. Now, Slim Jim, he likes the Philippines philosophy. He makes special notes on, you know, from one point of view, the Philippines philosopher says that he enjoys people talking about him because it makes him famous. But I, I'm going to tell you right now, some of the videos of the Philippines philosopher are just off the chain, okay? I don't think he likes the video that um, Dick and Sida made of him. I, I don't think, I don't believe he's going to thank Dick and Sida for that video. I, I personally would be fucking furious if someone did that to me. But I wouldn't let anybody know I was furious. I would just fucking not say a word about it. Like, I let Larry from Escaping the Philippines talk shit about coming over here and riding Daisy May. Yeah. We, we let that one go right underneath water under the fucking bridge. Because you know why? Because Larry, I don't give a fuck who Larry is, how big Larry is. Don't make no difference to me. Larry is not going to say those kind of things to most people he encounters. And I believe that I would be one of the people that he might run his mouth and say he would say that about me or to my face, but I don't think he would. Just like the Philippines philosopher runs off on these fucking weird tangents that he would do this, that, and the other thing. I think it's all a lot of fucking, fucking hot air, okay? As far as People running their mouth. Very rarely do you ever see that happen in real life. And I walk through the malls every fucking day. People look at me. Yesterday, I walked through the mall like this with my orange hair. Nobody said a fucking word. You know why? Because they don't want to be in a confrontation, public place or not. Okay? You can only get away with just so much shit, and then it becomes problematic. So... As far as bringing notoriety to the Philippines philosopher by people making videos and talking about him, Slim Jim always has a commentary on every video, but that one fucking video that Dick incited, now that's fucking over the top. That is fucking over the top, man. Yeah. That is fucking, I got to tell you, that is fucking over. I would, I would think that the Philippines philosopher, if he was face-to-face -face with you, for that video, I would think that a physical confrontation might be in the fucking books. I don't know for sure, but Dick and Sider made a fucking video about the Philippines philosopher that just is fucking over the top. I would think that fucking Philippines philosopher would lose his fucking marbles if he ever saw Dick and Sider in person. And, of course, that would be a personal problem. Thanks, Dick. Uh, thanks, Slim Jim. Scott Del Fuego. Daisy, now. Warren H. Can't resist the pot. Salamat. Scott Del Fuego. Put the pot on Daisy. Get super chat like crazy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. D Daisy? Let me get... Do you want to you wanna put the pot on again? Scott says, put the pot on Daisy, get super chat like crazy. She said, why not? All right, here's, choose your weapon. Ah, she goes, she goes all in. Baby. Okay, honey, that's enough. 
Ah, that was banging the pot like a lady. You notice those little taps that she gave it? Nothing harsh. Thank you, sweetheart. No, we're not painting Daisy's hair orange. It wouldn't matter how much money. Well, then again, <laughs> everything has a price, you know. But I don't think anybody could afford that. Okay, seizure word. I'm actually peeing my pants. Welcome to the machine. Bopsy la la. Uh, Frank only knows how to bang. Uh, that's not, that's just cold. That's cold. That shit is cold. You know that uh, how that upsets Frank when you talk like that. That's. <laughs> but, Bopsy la la. <laughs> Bopsy la. Thank God you're a wrench and can't be censored. <laughs> ah! How could you censor a wrench? That's not possible. Sorry, Frank. Adventures. I am laughing so hard. Really, your hair and pot. Ha ha. Tom and Ruth. Thank you. I don't want to play. I just want to bang a drum all day. That's right, baby. Okay, Tom and Ruth. Slim Jim says hello. My stomach hurts. Laughing so freaking hard. Salamat. I just did two super chats for two dollars, but it's not showing up yet. I've been sent a receipt for it in my Gmail. I don't know what to say. I'll, I'll let me get let me get that pot. Scott says you let me. I'll give you I'll give you four dollars worth of pot banging right now. I'll go two dollars with the big spoon and two dollars with the small spoon. This is for Warren H. Bang a pot, get a lot. If the Philippines philosopher is watching and somebody here said something that you don't like, well, maybe it's in retaliation for you saying that Daisy was cheating on me last week. I did get several messages to that effect, and Daisy has never cheated on me. Where you come up with this shit is just fucking amazing, where you come up with this. That Daisy was cheating on me when I went to New York? How the fuck would you know something like that? And where the fuck would you get an idea like that? The, the conversation I had in the live stream had nothing at all to do with Daisy cheating on me. And yet you surmised from a conversation that I had on the live stream from a little blurb I did for about 10 seconds that not only was Daisy cheating on me, she was looking for a new boyfriend while I was in New York. That's just about as fucking low as it goes. So to the Philippines philosopher, I'm going to tell you again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you again. Philippines philosopher. Number one, nobody super chats you because your channel doesn't put out intelligent and progressive and comedic content. Number two, nobody fucking likes you because you talk shit about everybody's wife and girlfriend, including Daisy May looking for a new boyfriend while I was in New York and other little ditties that you have done. Nobody fucking likes you. Don't you get it? You did a live, a nine hour live stream, super chat me while I'm fucking sleeping. You got squat. You did a 94 minute live stream. You got fucking 14 fucking dollars. And probably those were from fake accounts. That's my opinion. And I'm sticking to it. Then you did a fucking two hour live stream and you got fucking 25 pesos. Nobody fucking likes you, dude. Nobody likes you. If I did a live stream to super chat me, if you don't like the Philippines philosopher, I'd probably make a thousand fucking dollars. And maybe I'll do that one day. I'll have to set up some fucking commentary and some sound bites and let people know why no one likes you. Hmm.
How much pot banging does the five dollars get from the real Lord Kittens? It'll make me go deaf in one ear. One ear I go deaf. Right now my ears are ringing like a motherfucker. Anthony, Street Stories, welcome to the machine. Tom and Ruth, thank you very much. Darn Escape, we all love you. And Mike, too. Okay, so John Escape says he loves Daisy May because she's just a sweet person. And why the Philippines philosopher would call her my granddaughter slash indentured servant? Why the Philippines philosopher would call her a child prostitute in a video a long time ago that he took down? And why the Philippines philosopher would say Daisy was looking to cheat on me when I went to New York? Where does he come up with this shit? He fabricates this shit inside his fucking head. That's where he comes up with this shit. That's why no one likes him. John Dahl. Thanks for confirming that Warren's donation showed up. Seizure word. You are an actual hero. Thank you. I, I don't know what I was a hero to, but I, thank you very much. I, I just, I try to tell the truth about fucking what it's really like living here in the Philippines. And what it's really like living here in the Philippines if you put expectations as the next, if you compare the Philippines with fucking America, then you're going to go fucking nuts. I was in a supermarket yesterday. I met a fella from Ireland, I think it was. Could have been Scotland. He had a deep, deep accent. We were talking about the same shit I was talking about on here. And he, he, could, he, he was running as much shit to me as I was running to him about doing business in the Philippines. Apparently he has a business here too. He can't stand fucking dealing with the bureaucracy here and the people who make promises take deposits and don't do what the fuck they promise they're gonna do, okay? Thank you for uh, the compliment. Tom and Ruth, I make them laugh. Thank you, Tom and Ruth. Thank you. That's what I'm here for. I'm real, putting on a really big shoe, as uh, the Philippines philosopher would say. And yet, and yet the Philippines philosopher has no trouble stealing other people's ideas, but he gets pissed off if you say something that he may have said in the past. Unbelievable. Tom and Ruth, so, oh, Daisy gave me a nice shirt to wear into the city. <laughs> it's a muscle shirt. Sexy in here. Sexy. It's a sexy muscle. <laughs> yeah, it shows my uh, it shows my midriff bulge right here. I am the Wong. I am thin. Daisy gave me this shirt to wear. When I, when I have my, I got to tell you, this iron chair went over real well. I've made every single person that I've showed my hair to when I pull my hat off laugh. So I'm glad I could make Tom and Ruth laugh. His wife came inside and said the laughing so hard, his stomach hurts. Uh, Davo, Don, you walked into a perfectly normal live stream right in the middle of the live stream. I'm just reviewing some of the comments. Welcome to the machine. Tom and Ruth, Mike, or something else. Thank you. Those are all compliments to me. Bob C. Lala. It's a, it's a shame Frank grabbed his right pot. He, he doesn't have a proper pot. He doesn't understand bang a pot, get a lot. His pot is too small. That's why I collected $397 in Super Chat for banging a pot and painting my head orange the other day. And... And my shaved my eyebrows. Hey, Frank. Frank, listen to this. You want to hear stupid? They gave me $50 to shave this eyebrow, Mercury 3. And Dennis Adams gave me $50 to shave that eyebrow. That's 5,000 pesos to shave those two eyebrows. It took about, I don't know, four minutes. So that's 1,000 pesos a minute for Super Chat. Super Chat! Just for the eyebrows. That's nothing 
compared to the amount of money that I made on Patreon. Because when I told them that you know, about my Patreon account, several members up their subscribers from 3 to 20, from 5 to 20, from 10 to 20, and then two days ago, another 5 to 20 and another 10 to 20. That's $70 more a month on my Patreon account. Why? Because I provide people with a fucking really big show, as Ed Sullivan would say. A really, really, really big show. That's right, baby. Let me put my glasses on. Uh, oy, vi oy ve Dios mio. I think that means, oh my fucking God. Davo Don. Salamat. Warren says the pot is calling. Never ever. <laughs> ah, the market. Everybody is fucking with Frank today. The only pot Frank has is the one he shits on. That's it. He, he admits he uses the CR on occasion. And some people call the CR a pot. I, I don't know. I'm not. No, he had a pot. I don't know that it was stainless steel. Didn't make a lot of noise. And it wasn't really big enough to to put any super chat in, so you didn't get any super chat. Super chat! Okay. Scott the Fuego. Woohoo! Mercury's sakes. Looks like we got a super chat convoy. Salama. Davo pothead. Yes, I am a pothead in the Philippines. That's right. That's me. The, re the real Lord Kittens. Can I put stick glue in here? Let it burn? No. That's garbage, that thing, honey. No, you can put it in there, though. Yes, if you want to. I bought Daisy a glue gun yesterday. Um, if you'd like to try it out, go put the light on and work on the on the countertop. Okay. Put a put a put a piece of garbage paper, you know, just like a you know one of your uh, tea bag papers underneath, so the glue doesn't stick to anything but the. The thing you can, you can experiment. Daisy's going to use her new suit, her new glue gun. Super duper democracy doctor. That's me, Tom and Ruth. Warren sent you money. Also, did you see it? Of course, I did. I see it on my end. Thank you. So, to the Philippines philosopher, I don't know. I couldn't keep up with the super chat the other day. I he I don't. I you know one thing I feel sorry about the Philippines philosopher. I did an eight and a half hour live stream. So he had to spend eight and a half hours of his day reviewing my live stream to find one insignificant 30-second blip where I said, the neighbors said some things about Daisy that I didn't like when I got back from New York. That's all I said. Chismis. What, honey? Chismis. Chismis. The chismis. There was chismis amongst the Filipino neighbors. Now, let me tell you why they did that. Number one, there is not a single fucking person on this block I can't walk into their house and have dinner with. Nobody. There's not a single person on this block that doesn't say hello to me. So it's more of a breaking my balls than anything else. And it had nothing to do with Daisy cheating on me. And yet the Philippines philosopher moved from them breaking my balls about Daisy to her cheating on me when I was in America. What kind of a sick, demented, motherfucking, low-life scumbag can move from people breaking my balls to accusing my girlfriend of cheating on me when I went to America? That's the question that needs to be answered. You can answer it here, but that's what my opinion is. You'd have to be a sick, demented, low-life scumbag motherfucker to go from people breaking my balls when I walked down the block to stating in a live stream that you did and took down that Daisy was in fact cheating on me when I went to New York and I have the fucking recording. So don't fucking say you didn't say it because I'll put the fucking recording up on fucking YouTube. 